Last night, the January 6th committee conducted its eighth and final hearing before the congressional summer recess. Committee members Liz Cheney and Elaine Luria were center stage as they honed in on what they perceived as inaction in the part of former President Donald Trump. But could those two ladies' time in politics be limited? We're joined now by Republican congressional candidate Harriet Hageman, who's challenging Liz Cheney in the upcoming Wyoming primary. Also, Republican congressional candidate Jen Kiggins, who's taking on Elaine Luria in Virginia. Virginia. So it's great to see you ladies. Thank you both for coming on today. Harriet, let me start with you if I could. Liz Cheney has been a prominent voice on the January 6th Select Committee. In fact, here's how she describes the former president. Let's listen. And for hours, Donald Trump chose not to answer the pleas from Congress, from his own party, and from all across our nation to do what his oath required. He refused to defend our nation and our Constitution. He refused to do what every American president must. Harriet, do you agree with her claim? And how's Liz Cheney viewed by Wyoming voters? Well, I don't agree with much when it comes to Liz Cheney, especially right now. She's not only played a prominent role on this committee, she is, this is, this is her swan song, I guess you'd say. Uh, Liz Cheney has focused exclusively on this and as a result isn't doing anything to represent the citizens of Wyoming and that's how we feel. Uh, we're just starting Cheyenne Frontier Days here. It's the largest outdoor rodeo in the world, one of the premier events that we have in the state of Wyoming and I was with about 500 people last night celebrating Western art in Wyoming and I had an opportunity to talk to an awful lot of people and everyone is extremely disappointed and embarrassed by what she's doing. I had an opportunity to talk to a few people who have been back in Washington, D.C., uh, tried to meet with her on some extremely important issues related to their small businesses, and she wasn't available because, as her staff informed them, she's doing some very important work on the January 6th committee. The fact is that the citizens of Wyoming recognize that there are so many incredibly important issues that we're facing right now, inflation, uh, outrageous gas and diesel prices, an open border in your last segment talking about that. The, the reality is there are so many issues that are important to us out here, and the one issue that she has decided to focus on in the destruction of Donald Trump is just not where most people are here. Well, it's, it's not just Liz Cheney who's focusing in on January 6th. We've heard Democrats uh, do that as well. In fact, some are even campaigning on what happened that day at the Capitol on January 6th. Jen, let me talk to you about what you're hearing from constituents in Virginia. How often do you hear them talk about January 6th? Thank you. So we really never hear them talk about January 6th in my district. Of the thousands of doors I've knocked on and all the political and just campaign events we've been attending, you know, I have never heard a single person come up to me and say, you know what I really care about is January 6th. Right now, people are hurting. They're hurting in their pocketbooks. They care about the economy. They care about the gas prices that they can no longer afford. They care about grocery prices. These are the things that not just Virginians, but all Americans are caring about. But we're 100 days out almost from the midterm elections. So this is really political theater at its finest. We've got the Democratic Party, which is trying all kinds of tricks to distract us with shiny objects. And this January 6th committee is absolutely one of them. And I'm running against Elaine Luria, who not only votes with you know the Democrats' failed policies, and she's going to have to own that this time, uh, but she's trying to distract the voters of the second district who really don't care about this issue. She's she's ignoring them and not caring about the issues that they care about, which again is the economy and, and skyrocketing inflation. And and these are the things that are going to lose her the election uh, because she is not she doesn't have the needs of the people of the second district in mind. Again, about 100 days out from the midterm elections, it is getting closer. If I could ask you, Harriet, about some news of the day where we saw last night there was an attempted assault on a current sitting member of Congress, Lee Zeldin. He's set to make remarks around 1130 Eastern time, and we'll be listening to that. But are you concerned about your safety from people who might not agree with you where you stand politically? Well, 
Obviously, their emotions are running very, very high right now. That was a reprehensible act. And I think that that's one of the things that's interesting is that it tends to be leftists who do those sorts of things. And then the press typically covers up for it. So I, I, I think that all of us need to be concerned for our safety when you see things like that. At the same time, it's not going to stop me from getting out there and being with the citizens of Wyoming and talking to them about the issues that are important to them. Uh, what's reprehensible is that that person who did that is already out back out on the streets again. Uh, these are the failed policies, again, of the Democrats and the people who uh, want to talk about January 6th. But they don't want to actually talk about crime in the in the inner cities. They don't want to talk about what's going on on our uh, on the border. They don't want to talk about this sort of thing. Um, they let the guy back out of jail within 24 hours after attacking a sitting congressman and someone who's running for governor. Right. That's the bigger story to me on this. Yeah, you, you want these communities to feel safe, like you can go around and talk to people without having to worry about how, hiring security to make sure you are safe. Harriet Hageman, thank you so much for coming on. Jen Kiggins as well. Thank you, ladies. We'll be following your campaigns as we get closer to the mid.